Hi, I'm Pramod Sharma and we're looking at 10 tips for using a webcam for business. I've been planning to use a webcam much more extensively year after year and it's one of those things I never get around to do. This time I finally did. To get started I did a lot of research to figure out what the best techniques were, getting the right webcam, etc. and more important how to get everything set up and I found a lot of the instructions were more complicated than I wanted them to be. Now maybe if you're doing things for personal reasons and different standards apply, I'm focusing more on a business context and I found some simple steps that are pretty effective and I'd like to share those with you. The, one of the key things I want to get across to you is that you don't have to be very fancy. I'm not doing anything particularly sophisticated here you'll find that there are some flubs in what I do and depending on how many there are I may just leave them in just to show you how to recover from a mistake. The basic idea is that if you say something wrong then you pause, you do the correction and then in the video editing you can just take out the bad segment. I'm hoping there won't be too many needs to do that. Let's get started. The first thing you want to do when you're using a webcam is to set it up at eye level. This is a little tricky and first of all let me explain why you want to do this. Normally when you're using a webcam it's part of your laptop computer and your laptop computer is down on your desk. right? So that means that when you're doing your webcam work you're looking down and that means the camera is looking up so it gets a chance to look at your nose hairs and also your whatever this thing is called, chin, and that isn't particularly flattering. If you have the webcam at eye level, as I have done right now, then that's ideal. You can also have it a little bit higher, though I'm, used, I'm, I'm not as tall as everyone else, and I, I find that if things are taller, then I just feel a little shorter. So this way I feel that I'm at the same level as the viewer. So eye level is something that's important. The way you can arrange that is take your laptop computer and underneath it put some boxes or stacks of printer paper. Things like that will give you the height and then you'll be talking at eye level. It just feels a lot more natural when you're talking to someone at the same height. See, I've got creaky floors. I didn't realize that before. I'm not really sure what to do about that apart from maybe standing in a fixed spot. The second item is to look into the camera and that's important too because it creates a much better connection with the viewer. Normally you've got your webcam on top of your computer, right? So it's right at the top and what you're doing, if you're talking to someone, you're probably looking at them and then that means your eyes are down because the camera is here but you're looking at the image there and that looks natural to you but it doesn't look very good to the person you're talking to. It's important to look at that camera and when you're talking to someone and in my case I'm not talking to anyone I'm recording a video but the same thing applies looking right at the camera is key I'm going on the assumption that things will look okay light is very important when I got my webcam I was initially disappointed because it seemed that it was blurry I didn't know what the issue was and it turned out the main problem was the light was not strong enough. These webcams today do claim to work in low light and they work reasonably well but you do get graininess. In my case I wanted things to be clear because I want you to be able to read these things that are on the whiteboard. If it was just you looking at me it wouldn't be such a big deal but I think you get more value by looking at other things instead. The best light is natural light. In my case, I have a great big window at the side of my office and that lets in light. Right now I'm recording and it's later in the day, it's winter, and that means there isn't very much light. What I've done is I've augmented the light with another light. I'll, I'll let you just see what this equipment is so you'll see how basic it actually is. Okay, so this is the light that I have added. Right? So it's just a basic light that we had somewhere else in the facility and this is another, like this is the window. You can see that there's not much light coming in right now, but this pretty basic setup is actually enough. I'm using a tripod, but it's not a very good one. I'll explain why that doesn't really matter, and as a result, it isn't moving very smoothly when I adjust things. Again, I wanted to show you what you can do in a fairly basic way. 
Okay, so natural light is good. In my case, I placed the supplementary light in roughly the same spot as the window because that way I can get used to light coming from one direction without having to worry about other options. Now, if you want to get fancy and control the environment, then you can get all sorts of lights. In some situations, what they suggest, if your videos are primarily going to be you talking to the camera, then you get one light which is on one side of your face, another light that's on the other side, and a third light that's behind you. And so you can create some very interesting effects with those sorts of things. You also need diffusers so that the light spreads out, eliminate shadows. <laughs> I don't want to do any of those things. I just want to create videos that are real. And those things are going to be more set up than I'm likely able to want to do. And as a result, I won't create as many videos. The background is also important. If you look at some videos, you'll see funny things in the background like a door or funny plants going out of people's heads, those sorts of things. Not the right image, especially if you're doing things in a business context. In my case, I have a wall with a whiteboard and that's a pretty good backdrop. You would notice that my flat surfaces in my office have lots of things piled on them, but you can't see any of that. You may think I'm in a wonderful facility that's nice and clean, and you'd be wrong, but the video doesn't show you that. The way you dress is important too, and I know that I'm not dressed very well. I just wanted to make the point that it matters. I don't know if you really care how I'm dressed or not, but normally I'm doing things in a business context, so I spend a lot of time wearing suits and ties. That seems like overkill for this type of video. And if I just wore a t-shirt, then that's probably not enough. So I'm wearing something designed for the cold weather that we're experiencing in Toronto right now. I really should be wearing something better than this, but I just wanted to show you it's not really that big a deal. You're probably not getting distracted by what I'm doing, what I'm wearing. Now, it turns out that blue is an ideal color for webcams. Webcams see things differently than we do with our eyes. Blue is a really good color, white maybe not the greatest, things with stripes not very good, and red seems to be the hardest color for webcams to pick up. So you do want to pay attention to how you dress. Something you may want to do if you want to have consistency in your branding is wear the same outfit all the time. That doesn't mean you just get one shirt, maybe you've got a couple so you can have a clean one in stock. And that way when people see your videos, you look the same way and then it could look like they were all done on the same day, part of a series, whatever. The other way is to just wear whatever you happen to be wearing on the day, but maybe a little bit nicer. External webcams are much better than the ones that come inside your computer. And that makes sense, right? Because if you're buying an external device, then they've manufactured it differently. Also, having an external webcam keeps your video away from the noisy stuff that goes on in your computer. In particular, the microphones that are in the webcam are now separate, and that helps with better quality audio. We'll talk about audio a little bit later. So it's important to have an external webcam. It's ideal if you get one that allows you to mount it to a tripod. That gives you a lot more flexibility in how you set up your equipment. And also you get a better webcam because only the high-end devices offer that feature right now. It's also important to stand. When I see a lot of video, it's people sitting down and they look nice and comfortable, which is great. But there's a different energy when you're standing up. In my case, I'll tend to answer the phone when I'm standing up too, or make phone calls that way. It's just a different type of experience. And the other advantage of standing is that if I were lower, then you'd have a greater chance of seeing some of the mess in my office. But walls tend to be pretty clean. So if you're doing things at a height, then that's good. Again, you want the camera to be at eye level. That's very important for a natural recording. So what I'm doing right now is I'm looking directly at the webcam. There are a couple of, of lights on it telling me that it's on, but I'm not looking at what I'm recording, any of those things. I'm talking to this webcam, which looks a bit like an eye. I'm talking to it as if it's a person. You also want to be creative. What is unique about your environment? 
In my case, I have a whiteboard, and not everyone has one in their offices. I figured that I might as well use this as one of my props, and it's a pretty effective tool because you can see things besides simply me. You can see I've got these points here that I'm talking to. There's not a lot of detail there. It's really for my own benefit rather than yours. But at the same time, isn't that a little better than me working from a teleprompter, which I don't have, though that's something else I might want to explore. I just figured that this was a way to use something. And then if I am consistent in using this type of backdrop, then it'll be part of my branding. And how many videos do you see where someone is using a whiteboard? I could have written things on it while we are doing the recording, but in my case, I just wrote them down in advance. Depends what you're trying to do. But I am being interactive by taking this marker and putting check marks. The microphone is very important. Audio is key for video. And even if you get a good external webcam, the microphones on it are not going to be the greatest. In my case, what I did is I got a microphone in 2009 for my podcasts. You'll find 250 episodes already. And that same microphone, it's a USB one, plugs into my computer. That same microphone is the one that I'm using right now. I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so here it is. Let me just lower this here. Right, so there it is. It's, uh, and you can see some of the mess in my work area. So it's a fairly hefty web, sorry, it's a fairly hefty microphone. It has this wind filter. It's in a shock mount. It's mounted on a stand so that I can adjust it to the right height, etc. You don't have to have everything on day one, but these are the kinds of things that are good to have. Now to see if I can set this up the way I had it before for continuity. Again, the tripod I'm using is not the smoothest, and as a result, there is noise when I move it around and some jitteriness. Doesn't really matter because for the most part, I would not be moving it around. The other thing I could do is take photos of different things and simply insert them into the video as part of the editing process. Okay, so a microphone is really important. Maybe not on day one, but something to keep your eye on. Finally, our tenth tip is editing. When you start off, you won't want to do a lot of editing, or you don't need to do a lot. You may want to trim things at the beginning of the video and at the end, and that might be it. Maybe there's some faux pas in the middle that you want to just edit out, which I might do today, though I may just leave them in so that you can see how the mistakes were made, and that way you see the entire recording without any adulteration. <laughs> Adultery? No. <laughs> you, you see the entire video without any uh, anything taken out of it. So in the beginning you'll get software with your webcam and your computer that's pretty adequate. Beyond that there are lots of choices. I've experimented with Adobe Premiere Elements. I find that a little complicated. The one that I've started using most is is from Cyberlink. It's called Power Director. It works pretty well. There you have it. Those are the tips for creating video. You can see that there's not that much to it in the beginning. You don't have to be really fancy. You just need some fairly basic things. Some of the items in the beginning are actually free. And as you go further down, you get specialized equipment that gives you better results. If you would like to read the blog post that accompanies this video, then you can go to marketingactuary.com. I'm Pramod Sharma.